Vajrayana is also known as Tantric Buddhism, Tantrayana, Mantrayana, Secret Mantra, Esoteric Buddhism and the Diamond Way or Thunderbolt Way. Vajrayana is a complex and multifaceted system of Buddhist thought and practice which evolved over several centuries. According to Vajrayana scriptures Vajrayana refers to one of three vehicles or routes to enlightenment, the other two being the Theravada and Mahayana. Founded by the Indian Mahasiddhas, Vajrayana subscribes to Buddhist tantric literature. History of Vajrayana Although the first Tantric Buddhist texts appeared in India in the 3rd century and continued to appear until the 12th century, scholars such as Hirakuo Akira assert that the Vajrayana probably came into existence in the 6th or 7th century, while the term Vajrayana itself first appeared in the 8th century. The Vajrayana was preceded by the Mantrayana, and then followed by the Sahajayana and Kalachakrayana. India The period of Indian Vajrayana Buddhism has been classified as the fifth final period of Indian Buddhism. The literature of Vajrayana is absent from the oldest Buddhist literature of the Pali Canon and the Agamas. Mythological Origins In the Tibetan Buddhist tradition, it is claimed that the historical Shakaya Muni Buddha taught Tantra, but that, since these are secret teachings, confined to the guru-slash-disciple relationship, they were generally written down long after the Buddha's other teachings, the Pali Canon and the Mahayana Sutras. The Vajrayana tradition holds that its teachings were first expounded by the Buddha 16 years after his enlightenment. Historians have identified an early stage of Mantrayana beginning in the 4th century, and argue that assigning the teachings to the historical Buddha is patently absurd. Left square bracket clarification needed right square bracket. According to some traditions, Tantric Buddhism first developed in Adhyayana, a country which was divided into the two kingdoms Samba and Lankapuri. Samba has been identified with Sambalpa and Lankapuri with Subhanapura, Sanapa. In Drabhuti, the king of Sambalpa founded Vajrayana, while his sister, who was married to Prince Uvaraja, Jalendra of Lankapuri, Sanapa, founded Sahajayana. Historical Origins Mantrayana and Vajrayana Although the Vajrayana claims to be as ancient and authentic as any other Buddhist school, it may have grown up gradually in an environment with previously existing texts such as the Mahasanipata and the Ratnakatadharani. The basic position of Vajrayana is still the same as the early Buddhist position of not-self, there is nothing which is eternal point. The changes that took place reflected the changing society of medieval India, the presentation changed, the techniques of the way to enlightenment changed, and the outward appearance of Buddhism came to be dominated by ritualism, and the array of Buddhas, Bodhisattvas, and gods and goddesses. There are differing views as to where in the Indian subcontinent that Vajrayana began. There are assumptions about the origin of Vajrayana in Bengal, Adhyayana, located at Ardisha, or in the modern-day Swat Valley in Pakistan. The earliest texts appeared around the early 4th century. Nalanda University in eastern India became a center for the development of Vajrayana theory, although it is likely that the university followed, rather than led, the early tantric movement.
only from the 7th or the beginning of the 8th century, tantric techniques and approaches increasingly dominated Buddhist practice in India. Point from the 7th century onwards many popular religious elements of a heterogeneous nature were incorporated into Mahayana Buddhism, which finally resulted in the appearance of Vajrayana, Kalachakrayana, and Sahajayana Tantric Buddhism. These new tantric cults of Buddhism introduced mantra, mudra and mandala, along with six tantric abhichurus practices, such as mirana, death, stampana, samahana, vidvazan, achchatana and vajikarana. These cults revived primitive beliefs and practices, a simpler and less formal approach to the personal God, a liberal and respectful attitude towards women, and denial of the caste system. India would continue as the source of leading edge Vajrayana practices up until the 11th century, producing many renowned Mahasiddha. Vajrayana, Buddhism had mostly died out in India by the 13th century, and tantric versions of Buddhism and Hinduism were also experiencing pressure from invading Islamic armies. By that time, the vast majority of the practices were also manifest in Tibet, where they were preserved until recently. In the second half of the 20th century a sizable number of Tibetan exiles fled the oppressive, anti-religious rule of the communist Chinese to establish Tibetan Buddhist communities in northern India, particularly around Iramzala, Sahajayana and Kalachakrayana. The Vajrayana established the symbolic terminology and the liturgy that would characterize all forms of the tradition. The Sahajayana developed in the 8th century in Bengal. Point it was dominated by long haired, wandering Siddhas who openly challenged and ridiculed the Buddhist establishment. Point its most important text is the Dahakosa, written by Sarahapada. The Kalachakrayana developed in the 10th century point it is farthest removed from the earlier Buddhist traditions, and incorporates concepts of messianism and astrology not present elsewhere in Buddhist literature. Despised Classes The Tantric Buddhist sects made efforts to raise the dignity of the lowest of the low of the society to a higher level. Many celebrated Vajrayana Acharyas like Saraha, Hadipa, Dambi, Sangnayan Hiruka, Tantipa, Tantripada, and Luipada came from the so-called despised classes. The cult exerted a tremendous influence over the tribal and despised classes of people of Sambalpa and Balanga region. In the 9th or 10th century seven famous tantric maidens appeared in the Patna, Patnagar, region, which was then called Kuanri Pataye. These maidens are popularly known as Sataborni, seven sisters, namely, Jayanadai Malyuni, Luhakuti, Luhiruai, Nitai Darbani, Sukuti Chamaruai, Patrapinti Sabaruai, Gangi Gorduai and Swateluai. They hailed from the castes which were considered the lower castes of society, and were followers of Lakshminkara. Because of their miraculous power and feats, they were later deified and worshipped by the locals. China Esoteric teachings followed the same route into northern China as Buddhism itself, arriving via the Silk Road sometime during the first half of the 7th century, during the Tang Dynasty. Esoteric Mantrayana practices arrived from India, just as Buddhism was reaching its zenith in China, and received sanction from the emperors of the Tang dynasty. During this time, three great masters came from India to China, Subhakarasiha, Vajrabhadhi, and Amovajra. These three masters brought the esoteric teachings to their height of popularity in China.
During this era, the two main source texts were the Mahavarakana Abhisabhadhi Tantra and the Tattvasagraha Tantra. Traditions in the Sinasphere still exist for these teachings, and they more or less share the same doctrines as Shingon, with many of its students themselves traveling to Japan to be given transmission at Mount Koya. Esoteric methods were naturally incorporated into Chinese Buddhism during the Tang Dynasty. Subakarasi Ha's most eminent disciple, Master Yixing, C.H., was a member of the Zen school. In such a way, in Chinese Buddhism there was no major distinction between exoteric and esoteric practices, and the northern school of Zen Buddhism even became known for its esoteric practices of Deraism and Mantras. During the Yuan dynasty, the Mongol emperors made esoteric Buddhism the official religion of China, and Tibetan lamas were given patronage at the court. A common perception was that this patronage of lamas caused corrupt forms of Tantra to become widespread. When the Mongol Yuan dynasty was overthrown and the Ming dynasty was established, the Tibetan lamas were expelled from the court, and this form of Buddhism was denounced as not being an orthodox path. In late imperial China, the early traditions of esoteric Buddhism were still thriving in Buddhist communities. Robert Gimello has also observed that in these communities, the esoteric practices associated with Kundi were extremely popular among both the populace and the elite. In China and countries with large Chinese populations such as Taiwan, Malaysia, and Singapore, esoteric Buddhism is most commonly referred to as the Chinese term Mazen, or esoteric school. Traditions of Chinese esoteric Buddhism are most commonly referred to as referred as Tongma, Tang Dynasty Esoterica, or Han Shen Mazen. Han Transmission Esoteric School, Hanma for short, or Dongma, Eastern Esoterica, separating itself from Tibetan and newer traditions. These schools more or less share the same doctrines as Shingon, and in some cases, Chinese monks have traveled to Japan to train and to be given esoteric transmission at Mount Koya and Mount He. Sees Henayan at encyclopedia.com on Chinese esoteric Buddhism. Tibet and other Himalayan kingdoms. Main article, Tibetan Buddhism. In 747 the Indian master Padma Sampava traveled from Afghanistan to bring Vajrayana Buddhism to Tibet and Bhutan, at the request of the king of Tibet. This was the original transmission which anchors the lineage of the Nyingma school. During the 11th century and early 12th century a second important transmission occurred with the lineages of Atisa, Marpa and Bragmi, giving rise to the other schools of Tibetan Buddhism, namely Kadam, Kajayu, Sakaya, and Jeluk, the school of the Dalai Lama. Japan Main article, Japanese Buddhism. See also, Shingon. During the Tang Dynasty in China, when esoteric Buddhist practices reached their peak, Japan was actively importing Buddhism, its texts and teachings, by sending monks on risky missions across the sea to stay in China for two years or more. Depending on where the monks stayed and trained, they may have brought back esoteric Buddhist material and training back to Japan. In 804, Monk Seicho came back from China with teachings from the Shiante sect, but was also trained in esoteric lineages. When he later founded the Japanese Tendai sect, esoteric practices were integrated with the Tendai teachings, but Tendai is not an exclusively esoteric sect. 
Subsequent disciples of Seicho also returned from China in later years with further esoteric training, which helped to flesh out the lineage in Japan. On the same mission in 804, Emperor Kamu also sent monk Hukei to the Tang Dynasty capital at Chang'an, present day Xi'an. Hukei absorbed the Vajrayana thinking from eminent Indian and Chinese Vajrayana teachers at the time, and synthesized a version of which he took back with him to Japan, where he founded the Shingon School of Buddhism, a school which continues to this day. Unlike Tendai, Shingon is a purely esoteric sect. Indonesian Archipelago Main article, Vajrayana Buddhism in Southeast Asia. The Empire of Sri Vijaya in Southeast Sumatra was already a center of Vajrayana learning when Dharma Master Yijing C.H. resided there for six months in 671, long before Padmasambhava brought the method to Tibet. In the 11th century, Atisha studied in Sri Vijaya under Salimpa, an eminent Buddhist scholar and a prince of the Sri Vijayan ruling house. Through early economic relationships with the Sri Vijaya Empire, the Philippines came under the influence of Vajrayana. Vajrayana Buddhism also influenced the construction of Borobuda, a three-dimensional mandala, in central Java circa 800. Mongolia. In the 13th century, the Tibetan Buddhist teachers of the Sakya school led by Sakya Pandita Kunga Jyotsen took part in a religious debate with Christians and Muslims before the Mongolian royal court. As a result the Mongolian Prince Garden adopted Tibetan Buddhism as his personal religion, although not requiring it of his subjects. Dragon Chajayal Phagpa, Kajayupa Pandita's nephew, eventually converted Kublai Khan to Buddhism. Since the Khan conquered China and established the Yuan dynasty which lasted from 1271 to 1368, this led to the renewal in China of the tantric practices which had died out there many years earlier. Vajrayana practice declined in China and Mongolia with the fall of the Yuan dynasty. Mongolia saw another revival of Vajrayana in the 17th century, with the establishment of ties between the Dalai Lama in Tibet and the Mongolian princedoms. This revived the historic pattern of the spiritual leaders of Tibet acting as priests to the rulers of the Mongol Empire. Having survived suppression by the communists, Buddhism in Mongolia is today primarily of the Jilugpa school of Tibetan Buddhism, and is being reinvigorated following the fall of the communist government. Place within Buddhist tradition. Various classifications are possible when distinguishing Vajrayana from the other Buddhist traditions. Third turning of the wheel. Vajrayana can also be seen as the third of the three turnings of the wheel of Dharma, left square bracket five right square bracket. In the first turning Shakaya Muni Buddha taught the four noble truths at Viranasi in the 5th century BC which led to the founding of Buddhism and the later early Buddhist schools. Details of the first turning are described in the Dhammakakapavatana Sutta. The oldest scriptures do not mention any further turnings other than this first turning. The Mahayana tradition claims that there was a second turning in which the perfection of wisdom sutras were taught at Vulture's Peak, which led to the Mahayana schools. Generally, scholars conclude that the Mahayana scriptures, including the perfection of wisdom sutras, were composed from the first century onwards. According to the Vajrayana tradition, there was a third turning which took place at Dhanayakataka 16 years after the Buddha's enlightenment. 
Some scholars have strongly denied that Vajrayana appeared at that time, and placed it at a much later time. The first Tantric, Vajrayana Buddhist, texts appeared in the 3rd century se, and they continued to appear until the 12th century. Satrayana and Vajrayana Vajrayana can be distinguished from the Satrayana. The Satrayana is the method of perfecting good qualities, where the Vajrayana is the method of taking the intended outcome of Buddhahood as the path. Pyramitayana and Vajrayana. According to this schema, Indian Mahayana revealed two vehicles, yana, or methods for attaining enlightenment, the method of the perfections, Pyramitayana, and the method of mantra, Mantrayana. The Pyramitayana consists of the six or ten pyramides, of which the scriptures say that it takes three incalculable eons to lead one to Buddhahood. The Tantra literature, however, claims that the Mantrayana leads one to Buddhahood in a single lifetime. According to the literature, the mantra is an easy path without the difficulties innate to the Paramitanaya. Mantrayana is sometimes portrayed as a method for those of inferior abilities. However the practitioner of the mantra still has to adhere to the vows of the Bodhisattva. Philosophical Background Vajrayana is firmly grounded in Mahayana philosophy, especially Madhyamaka. Two Truths Doctrine Vajrayana subscribes to the Two Truths Doctrine of Conventional and Ultimate Truths, which is present in all Buddhist tenet systems left square bracket 21 right square bracket The Two Truths Doctrine is a central concept in the Vajrayana path of practice and is the philosophical basis for its methods. The Two Truths identifies conventional a.k.a. relative and absolute a.k.a. nirvana. Conventional truth is the truth of consensus reality, common sense notions of what does and does not exist. Ultimate truth is reality, as viewed by an awakened or enlightened mind. Characteristics of Vajrayana Goal the goal of spiritual practice within the Mahayana and Vajrayana traditions is to become a Bodhisattva, that is attainment of a state in which one will subsequently become a Buddha after some further reincarnation, whereas the goal for Theravada practice is specific to become an errant, that is attain enlightenment with no intention of returning, not even as a Buddha. In the Satrayana practice, a path of Mahayana, the path of the cause is taken, whereby a practitioner starts with his or her potential Buddha nature and nurtures it to produce the fruit of Buddhahood. In the Vajrayana the path of the fruit is taken whereby the practitioner takes his or her innate Buddha nature as the means of practice. The premise is that, since we innately have an enlightened mind, practicing seeing the world in terms of ultimate truth can help us to attain our full Buddha nature. Experiencing ultimate truth is said to be the purpose of all the various tantric techniques practiced in the Vajrayana. Apart from the advanced meditation practices such as Mahamudra and Dzogchen, which aim to experience the empty nature of the enlightened mind that can see ultimate truth, all practices are aimed in some way at purifying the impure perception of the practitioner to allow ultimate truth to be seen. These may be Ngandro, or preliminary practices, or the more advanced techniques of the Tantric Sadhana. Motivation As with the Mahayana, motivation is a vital component of Vajrayana practice. The Bodhisattva path is an integral part of the Vajrayana, which teaches that all practices are to be undertaken with the motivation to achieve Buddhahood for the benefit of all sentient beings. Ritual 
The distinctive feature of Vajrayana Buddhism is ritual, which is used as a substitute or alternative for the earlier abstract meditations. For Vajrayana Tibetan death rituals, see Fower. Appear. The Vajrayana is based on the concept of skillful means, Sanskrit, appear, as formulated in Mahayana Buddhism. It is a system of lineages, whereby those who successfully receive an empowerment or sometimes called initiation, permission to practice, are seen to share in the mainstream of the realization of a particular skillful means of the Vajra Master. In the Vajrayana these skillful means mainly relate to Tantric, Mahamudra or Dzogchen practices. Vajrayana teaches that the Vajrayana techniques provide an accelerated path to enlightenment left square bracket citation needed right square bracket. Esoteric Transmission Main Article, Esoteric Transmission Vajrayana Buddhism is esoteric, in the sense that the transmission of certain teachings only occurs directly from teacher to student during an initiation or empowerment and cannot be simply learned from a book. Many techniques are also commonly said to be secret, but some Vajrayana teachers have responded that secrecy itself is not important and only a side effect of the reality that the techniques have no validity outside the teacher-student lineage. In order to engage in Vajrayana practice, a student should have received such an initiation or permission. If these techniques are not practiced properly, practitioners may harm themselves physically and mentally. In order to avoid these dangers, the practice is kept secret outside the teacher-slash-student relationship. Secrecy and the commitment of the student to the Vajra Guru are aspects of the Samaya, Tibdamtsik, or sacred bond, that protects both the practitioner and the integrity of the teachings. The teachings may also be considered self-secret, meaning that, even if they were to be told directly to a person, that person would not necessarily understand the teachings without proper context. In this way the teachings are secret to the minds of those who are not following the path with more than a simple sense of curiosity. Vows and Behavior Main Article, Samaya Practitioners of the Vajrayana need to abide by various tantric vows or Samaya of behavior. These are extensions of the rules of the Pratimaksha vows and Bodhisattva vows for the lower levels of Tantra, and are taken during initiations into the empowerment for a particular Anatta Yoga Tantra. The special Tantric vows vary depending on the specific mandala practice for which the initiation is received, and also depending on the level of initiation. The Ngagpa slash Ngakmo yogis from the Nyingma school keep a special non-celibate ordination, they are practitioners and are considered neither lay nor monk or nun. A tantric guru, or teacher, is expected to keep his or her Samaya vows in the same way as his students. Proper conduct is considered especially necessary for a qualified Vajrayana guru. For example, the ornament for the essence of Manjushri Kirti states, Distance yourself from Vajra masters who are not keeping the three vows, who keep on with the root downfall, who are miserly with the Dharma, and who engage in actions that should be forsaken. Those who worship them go to hell and so on, as a result. Tantra Techniques Main article, Tantra Techniques, Vajrayana. Classifications of Tantra. The various Tantra texts can be classified in various ways. Fourfold division. The best known classification is by the Jelug, Sakaya, and Kajayu schools, the so-called Sama or New Translation schools of Tibetan Buddhism. 
They divide the tantras into four hierarchical categories. Kriya Yoga, Action Tantra, which emphasizes ritual. Chiraya Yoga, Performance Tantra, which emphasizes meditation.